My trip to Britain was amazing. You'd know that if you've seen last week's one hour plus landscape photography movie from the Lake District. In fact, it was so good that Nigel James and I decided to repeat the success and go for another trip. This time to the gorgeous English region of Cornwall. So, good morning everyone. I had a really nice video planned for you, but idiot me forgot my main camera in the car. And it's like all the way over here. Yeah, he's laughing, he is. <laughs> it sounds funnier when he say it out loud. Yeah, so um, they are like having fun of my misery. But yeah, we had this awesome, beautiful location called Kynan's Cove. And it, yeah, it really is frustrating not having my main camera. So I have to photograph everything on my vlogging camera, which luckily is not my Osmo Pocket right now, but it's actually my A7C, my backup camera. And it's 24 megapixels, so it's pretty good. But I think it would be an awesome day or morning to talk about how to fail at landscape photography and let's just say that the first thing is to forget your camera in the car when it's far away so yeah Despite the unfortunate events of forgetting my brand new 60 megapixel A7R5, what is in truth not a big surprise, the 24 megapixel A7C actually did quite a good job. It's a luxury to have 60 megapixels and it's fun to play with, but 24 megapixels is generally more than sufficient to get nice, clean, and sharp photos. At 24 megapixels, the lens is usually more important anyway, and here I used my new 16 to 35 f4G lens from Sony. I made a review of that lens a couple of weeks back, so if you're interested in a really sharp wide angle, be sure to check out that video. So I can of course just do the vlogging on my phone and I kind of have to right now because the light is gorgeous, really popping off. But the main problem is, and this, this is the second way to fail at landscape photography, is not knowing your camera. The problem is with my A7C, it is just not set up to be my main photography camera. So I'm just faffing around with the settings so much, like putting my filters on and off, changing the ISO and, and forgetting what knobs does what. There's just so many things that I have to like keep changing. And also if I'm going to do video at the same time, which would be nice of this beautiful place. So yeah, it, it's, it's really just not optimal. So make sure you set up your camera in a way that you can easily work with it and change around in different settings. Do you want to go long exposure? Do you want to go short exposure? What kind of settings do you want to use? It's much, much easier to be there and be ready and get the shot when you actually have a functioning camera that you don't have to think too much about. So another way to fail at landscape photography is definitely not to utilize the benefit of the different seasons. So obviously now being in England, all the way throughout the year from summer to winter, the sunrise and sunset positions change quite a lot. Now it is November right now, which means that the sun is setting to the south, southeast-ish. And that is really good during winter time for this specific location here. You can see how we get the light in from the side. A little bit later in the year, the sun will set a little bit further towards south. However, if we were here during summer, it completely wouldn't work because the sun would rise all the way over there at a completely different angle. So in that way, it's very important to think about like, where does the sun rise? Another benefit in regards to the seasons is, of course, like during winter, you can probably get snow, depending on where you are. There's probably not snow here during winter. And during summer, you get all the blooming flowers and so forth. Autumn, autumn colors, use the seasons to your advantage. So there's always something to shoot. And if you're in between seasons, like between winter and autumn, which can be a little bit frustrating for many photographers I know, 
then make sure to photograph at locations that are independent of the seasons that would work no matter the season. So yeah, definitely use the seasons to your advantage. It always takes a bit of editing to get the most out of raw files like these, and it being a seascaper usually blend different photos as the waves are rarely optimal at the same time and I need different exposures to catch the entire dynamic range anyway. If you do struggle with editing, I have now and for the rest of the black week period, of which there are only a few days left, a huge $100 discount on my massive landscape photography post-processing course. I usually say a few words about the course, but this time I'll let Dave do the talking. Loving your Photoshop for Landscape Photographers course mess, thank you for creating it. My confidence in using Photoshop has increased loads and is now my go-to editing software. Using masks is becoming second nature and has made a huge difference to my editing already. I can see an improvement with each edit the more I practice. Thank you Dave, I'm so happy to hear that. So if you want to enroll, be sure to use the coupon code in the description of the video to get $100 off. It only lasts for a few more days. So another way to fail at landscape photography is to get a little bit too stuck in your own mind. Obviously we are here to photograph the big epic vista shot of Kynan's Cove. However, just over here in this direction, we had beautiful sun coming through these cliffs and we have all this sea mist that is being backlit by the sun. It's obviously not a photo at all that I had foreseen was an option, but I did give up for like 30 seconds on photographing the big epic vista shot and then tried something else instead. So definitely try a whole lot of different things. Right Nigel? Yes, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Which is what I'm about to do. Yes. Sometimes it works to do something different and other times it doesn't. This was one of those that didn't really yield anything. It's not bad bad, it's just a bit meh. And if you so far enjoyed this video, I'd highly appreciate a like. So another way to fail at landscape photography is to not simplify your photos. So what I mean by that is not necessarily to go super minimalist, but it is important that you only include in the frame what you actually want to have in there to tell the story. Or at least to tell, give the viewer an idea about what it is you're photographing. So even though we have been photographing this big epic vista shot, I've still been very much aware of the foreground down here and what I've included. So sometimes I've zoomed a lot out so I could include the entire vista and sometimes I've zoomed a little bit more in simply just to show a little bit more of a tighter crop. I especially have to do that now that I'm shooting at 24 megapixels like I am today. <laughs> but right now I'm also photographing down here in the background. You can see Nigel and James standing right there. And we have the light coming in and then we have the waves. So I'm really simplifying the photo by using the long lens. So in that way I can zoom into them and get this silhouetted shot of them and then have the waves there in the background with no horizon. Looks really really cool. And obviously simplifying your photos is a lot about how you choose to compose your photos. And if you want to know even more about how to compose your photos, be sure to get my two ebooks. You can always start with the first one and get the second one afterwards. They're super simple, they have loads of examples, minimal text so you actually get through it. <laughs> And then you can apply all these different compositional tools. As it is an ebook, you can even bring it out into the field and have it on your phone and just like get some inspiration on location with them. 
There are links to both of them down in the description. So another way to fail at landscape photography is to not use the light to your benefit. So obviously we came here to photograph the sunrise, beautiful morning light, morning glow, you've already seen the photos. However, I had all the intent of walking <laughs> down here, but on the way I saw that down here, the sun has started to like come through this area here, down here, and it really throws both some beautiful shadows but also some beautiful light down through this I don't know what you call this gorge thingy that leads out into the uh, the islands here so even though I don't have the colorful morning light anymore I still have some pretty decent and relatively soft light since the Sun is still like a little bit down you can really see the sea spray here in the background. It looks really, really nice. But uh, yeah, so definitely use the light to your advantage. Here's a photo. I love this scene. I'm just waiting for a ship to lay anchor and a bunch of drunk pirates coming out to hide a treasure chest. Let me know down in the comments which of these three photos you like the most. The blue hour photo, the golden hour photo or the late morning photo. When I had enough photos from this location I went down to join Nigel and James for some wave photography. Be sure to check out their channels and subscribe. Nigel got a really, really beautiful wave from here, which I'm super jealous of. And James already have a video out from our tour where he shoots with a Leica camera. But you've probably already seen that as his videos on alternative gear always does really well. So Nigel, I'm making a video about failing as a landscape photographer. Yeah. I, I, I often well, Why are you interviewing me? <laughs> <laughs> I often get comments on YouTube that they are happy to see that we are failing too. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah you failed this morning, forgot to bring your camera. Yeah, um, don't mention it. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I mean it's hard isn't it? I mean this shot here is going to be so difficult to shoot because it's such a high dynamic range. But I just want to experiment because I find that that's when I improve the most, when I just try things and fail a lot. Um, which happens more often than success. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know. Wise words from Nigel, the more you try and the more you fail and obviously learn from your mistakes, the more you will improve. I'll definitely not forget my camera again, but I may forget a tripod at some point. Now I didn't really bother with this scene that Nigel was shooting, but I did hammer off about 500 photos of waves breaking and I did get a couple I'm pretty happy with. After a cup of coffee and a bit of morning cake at the cafe, we went up the other hill to photograph the cove from the other side. Clouds were moving in, so the combination of a sunlit foreground and darker background was rather promising, and I had found a really cool composition I hadn't seen any photos of before. So we have come up over on the other side, which is actually the traditional view. It's 
a little bit further down here where all the tourists take their photos. I, however, has come a little bit further up so I can use the foreground ridge right here and simply just setting up my camera on the intervalometer and then I'm just running down there. Speaking of fails, hopefully there's not a whole lot of things that can fail right here, but make sure that if you put your camera up freestanding like this, that there's not a whole lot of thieves around or people who can knock it over or something like that. So obviously I just, even though this is a tourist location, I just checked if there were actually tourists around, which there wasn't, so I could run down there. It's only like 30 seconds to get down and then maybe a minute to get back up, but definitely make sure not to get your gear stolen. But I think this is really epic. I have not seen a photo like this in my research of Kynan's Cove at all. So hopefully it's going to be really nice. Now that I can't stand still for an exposure time of 15 seconds, which it took to make this photo, I had to blend a photo of myself on the ridge with a fast exposure, with a photo, with a long exposure. What are you doing? Wait, you just got my shot. No! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am trying to photograph until some rude Danish person came. Um, <laughs> The waves over How there. How can I possibly be in your shot at that angle? <laughs> I've got those, I've got, I've got the houses. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Be sure to benefit from the $100 off during the Black Week sale. It'll only last for a few more days. After that, I'll reduce the discount so that there is still a bit to save. If you're more interested in composition, then my two ebooks are where you should look. And if you haven't watched my one hour landscape photography movie from the Lake District, be sure to check it out. See you next time.